Hi everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video because I'm going to take you through some of the romances that are being released over the summer months. I feel like summer is just the perfect time to sit out by the pool and read a steamy romance, a steamy rom-com. I have been reading them like a lot recently, all the time, all seasons, but I know in summer I'm going to be reading so much more. I'm going to go over my most anticipated summer romance releases. This is going to be a little bit of rom-com, a little bit of just straight up smut, a little bit of some historical romance. I just have been loving the romance genre so so much and that also brings me to the sponsor of today's video so when this brand reached out to me and asked to work with me i was so so excited because this is just perfect for romance readers kiss is an app where you can read and write romance kiss will sweep you away into any fantasy you've been thinking of from billionaires to bad boys vampires to werewolves there's guaranteed a story that will create your perfect escape best of all you can access books chapter by chapter so you can easily squeeze in some reading time on the go or curled up in bed Kiss features romance stories of all genres, along with heat levels to match whatever naughty or nice you're feeling. Kiss features content from New York Times and USA Today best-selling authors. Read free chapters from your favorite authors and get daily updates on what's hot and new. Themes featured in Kiss include a popular romance, hot fantasy, thrilling suspense, LGBT, and more. If you need a fix from one of your tried and true authors or one of your favorite tropes, Kiss has it. Whether it's the best friend's older brother, the hottie next door, or being swept off your feet by an alpha billionaire, Kiss has you covered. If you want to discover someone new, Kiss has endless titles and authors to choose from, including a new and exclusive content. I've honestly been on this app since they reached out to me and it's just so much fun to browse through. They have so many fun categories and it's really like broken up into exactly what you could want. So we have new arrivals, editors picks, mafia romance, steamy vampires and werewolves, romantic comedies, contemporaries, paranormal, new adult, after hours, things that are trending, things that are the best, westerns, motorcycle club, BDSM, male male, military, sports, time travel. And it's also broken up by genre and so you can kind of just read books on here on the fly. I just think I'm always looking for a deal on reading romance so I'm definitely going to be starting checking out some of the ones on here. One of the ones that is catching my eye right now is If It's Only Love by Lexi Ryan. And it has many peppers in the spice level, so that intrigues me. This is about an NFL player as he leaves the NFL and goes back to his hometown and tries to win back the love of his life, who also is the mother of his daughter. So, I mean, just like what more could you want? An app that curates every romance thing you could want. So definitely, definitely check them out if you're interested. And I will leave a link to the app below in the description box. With that being said, let's move into some of the titles that are being released this summer into like fall. So I'm basically doing this April through September and I chose four of the titles that stood out to me the most for each month, just so we're not here for like ever. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to all of these and I tried most of them are romantic comedies But I did try to pick from some other types of romances as well. So starting off in April Yes, I know it's technically May right now, but I still feel like these April titles should be talked about The first one is a book you've probably seen me cry over if you watch my channel and that is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne um, I got this book as an ARC in advanced copy and I just absolutely adore it It's probably my new favorite Sally Thorne, which is really hard because the hating game is hard to top yeah, I just adored this one. And this one came out on April 13th. So Ruthie Madonna has worked at the Prodance Luxury Retirement Villa for six years and she has her routine down pat. She takes care of the grounds and the elderly residents. But her life is about to completely change after she has a chance running with Teddy Prescott, the owner of the villa's son, who mistakes her for a little old lady. When Teddy and his father come to the retirement villa looking for work for Teddy, Ruthie gets her revenge by setting him up to be the assi assistant to two four foot 90 year old menaces whose assistance have not lasted more than a full week. But Ruthie does not count on the fact that the ruthless Parlonis may have just found their match in Teddy and that Teddy may not be what he appeared to be at first. I just love this. It was so quirky and sweet and adorable. If you're looking for a really heartfelt rom-com, I highly suggest this one. This next one is also out on April 13th and this is Hot Copy by Ruby Barrett and 
This is about Corinne Blunt, knows what people think of her, an icy exterior, but that's the price she's had to pay to get to the top. She'd hoped to find an ally in Wesley Chambers, but when he joins the boys club of the office, she finds that absolutely unforgivable. So she relegates him to assistance work thinking that will do the trick. What she was not expecting was that Wes was sincerely apologetic. And to her surprise, Corinne believes him. Being forced to work together is one thing, but the long hours at the office, with what turns out to be a kind, thoughtful man, has things turning complicated fast. I love a good old office romance, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one out. Then next on April 27th, we have a rom-com that just seems like insane and I just really want to read it because it seems so cool and a very unique premise and that is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutano. And its description is a murder mystery rom-com, which is a celebration of mothers and daughters as well as an exploration of Chinese Indonesian culture. One accidental murder 2,000 wedding guests, three maybe cursed generations, and four meddling Asian aunties to the rescue. When Madeline Chan ends up accidentally killing her blind date, her meddlesome mother calls in her even more meddlesome aunts to clean up her mess. Unfortunately, a dead body is hard to find, especially when it ends up in a cake cooler being shipped to the year's most high-profile wedding that Mehdi's family is the company in charge of organizing. But things take an even worse turn when Mehdi's great college love and biggest heartbreak makes a surprise appearance amongst the wedding chaos. Just the fact that she killed her blind date like as me instantly hooked. This next book is out April 29th and it literally has so many tropes that I love. I've already pre-ordered it and this is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. He has a heart of ice but for her he would burn the world. Alex Volkov is a devil blessed with the face of an angel and he has a very hard exterior due to a troubled past. He is driven by tragedy and on a ruthless pursuit for vengeance. But when he's forced to look after his best friend's sister, he just might feel a crack in his icy exterior. Ava Chen is a free spirit trapped by the ghosts of a childhood that she can't remember, but she doesn't let that stop her from seeing the beauty in things, including the heart beneath the icy exterior of a man she shouldn't want. I mean, this is like grumpy sunshine, brother's best friend. It just like hits all of the marks for me and seeing the author's TikTok, which I highly recommend that you follow because she's great. I just know it's gonna have some things that I really enjoy, so looking forward to this one. This is also on my May TBR, check that out. Now we are moving on to May. The first book out in May is The Secret Bridesmaid by Katie Birchall, and if you saw this was on my April TBR. Matrimony meets mayhem. When professional bridesmaid for hire Sophie Breeze says I do to planning the biggest day for the London aristocracy's most high profile wedding of the year, can't you keep the perfect day from turning into the perfect disaster? And it's funny, escapist, and set amongst British, British royal elite. I love a good royal book and i'm literally when I, at the time i'm filming this i'm probably going to be reading this soon so excited next out on may 11th is people we meet on vacation by emily henry who is the author of beach read alex and poppy have nothing in common but ever since a fateful car ride home from college many years ago they have been nothing but the best of friends she's a wild child and he prefers to stay home with a book they live far apart however every summer for one week they go on vacation together until two years ago when they ruined everything they have not spoken since poppy is everything she could ever want but she's still stuck in a rut and so she decides to reach out to alex and convince him to take one last vacation with him in order to set everything on the table and see if they can work things out then next up in may on may 18th is the soulmate equation by christina lauren i have a Already read this one and spoiler I adored it. Single mom Jessica Davis is a data and statistics whiz but she is not so lucky when it comes to love. She's been abandoned by many people who care about her including her mother which is why she was raised by her grandparents as well as the father of her child who decided he did not want to be involved in her life. But then Jess hears about Genetic Ollie, a new DNA based dating service where you have the potential to find your soulmate based on an algorithm that has to do with several genes that deal with love and compatibility. Jess understands the reliability of numbers so she decides to take a chance. However, what she was not expecting for her perfect match to be in the form of Dr. Riva Pena, who is a suck up stubborn man who is most definitely not her soulmate. But Genetic Ali has a proposition. Get to know him and appear publicly with him since after all dr pena is one of the founders of this company and they'll pay her jess is in no position to turn down the money and so, so she takes this opportunity and this chance on river but will the science prove to be right 
I loved it. It was great. Definitely makes me want to read more Christina Lauren because this is actually the first I've read from them. But I know they have so many novels that lots of people love. Last up for May, we have Hang the Moon by Alexandria Bellaflor, and this is a queer own voices novel about a hopeless romantic who vows to show his childhood crush that romance isn't dead by recreating iconic dates from his favorite rom-coms. Brendan Lowell loves love. It's why he created a dating app and why he's convinced the one is out there even if he hasn't found her yet. When his sister's best friend shows up in Seattle unexpectedly, Brendan jumps on the chance to hang out with her again, especially since Annie is his childhood crush. Annie booked a last minute trip to Seattle to spend some time with friends before she moves halfway across the world. She is not looking for love, especially not with her best friend's brother. Getting involved is a terrible idea, but when Brendan learns that Annie has given up on love, he's determined to prove that romance is real. Okay, now moving on to June. On June 1st, we have Neon Gods by Katie Robert, and Katie Robert is literally becoming one of my favorite romance authors. She's definitely more on the way spicier side, um, but she has some really great series, so check that out if they interest you. And this is going to be her first series, I believe, that's published with source books at Casa Blanca, so that's exciting. And this is the Dark Olympus series. And yes, it's following the Greek gods, but in a modern setting. And this first one is, of course, Hades and Persephone. The next one is Psyche and Eros, I think. And then I don't know what comes after that, but it's exciting. Society darling Persephone Demetrio plans to flee the ultra-modern city of Olympus and start over somewhere separate from the politics of the backstabbing 13 houses. But that's all ripped away when her mother ambushes her with an engagement to Zeus, the dangerous power behind the city. With no options left, Persephone flees to the forbidden undercity and makes a devil's bargain with a man she once believed a myth. Hades has spent a life in the shadows, but when he finds that Persephone can offer a little slice of the revenge he's spent years craving, it's all the excuse he needs to help her for a price. Katie Robert does dark romance so well. I'm really excited to see this take on the Greek gods, especially after her take on um, Disney villains in the Wicked Villains series. Love that series. Highly recommend. Next on June 1st is another one I'm so looking forward to and that is One Last Stop by Casey McQuinson, who is the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I read when it came out adored. For cynical August, moving to New York City is supposed to prove to her that magic and cinematic love stories don't exist. She waits tables at a 24-hour pancake diner and lives with weird roommates. There's certainly no chance her subway commute can be anything but the standard everyday bustle and hustle. But then there's this gorgeous girl on the train, Jane. Dazzling, charming, mysterious. Jane always shows up in her worn leather jacket to save August's day when she needs it the most. August's subway crush becomes the best part of her day until she realizes one big problem. Jane is displaced in time from the 1970s and August is going to use everything that she knows to help her. I mean, I've just heard great things about this. Like, it seems perfect and like a lot of fun. Yeah. This next one is from another well-loved author, and this is Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon, who's also the author of two other widely popular novels. Evie Thompson doesn't believe in love anymore, especially after she sees a couple kiss in public and is bombarded with an image of how their romance began and how it will end. As Evie tries to understand why this is happening, she signs up for dance classes at La Brea Dance Studio, learning ballroom dancing with a boy named X. X is everything that Evie is not, adventurous, passionate, daring. His philosophy is to say yes to everything, including to entering a ballroom competition with a girl that he just met. Falling for X is definitely not what Evie had in mind. If her visions of heartbreak has taught her anything, Evie knows that sometimes that no one escapes love unscathed. But as they dance together, she asks herself, is love not worth the risk? This just seems heartwarming and I love the dance aspect as well. Next, we move on to the July books. So first up on July 6th is Too Good To Be Real by Melanie Johnson. As you can see, there are seagulls and corgis on the cover, which immediately drew my attention. Julia is ready to give up on love, and she plans to prove there are dozens of reasons why life is not like a romantic comedy. With the threat of layoffs looming over her head, she searches for the ultimate pitch to present to her boss at a popular website that she writes for. She stumbles upon a resort offering guests the once-in-a-lifetime romantic comedy experience, where they can live out their rom-com dream. At the resort, Julia has a not-so-meet-cute involving an aggressive seagull and an adorably awkward man named Luke. Julia hides the fact that she's there to do a story, but Luke harbors secrets of his own. They fall quickly in the resort setting, but could their love be real when they haven't been honest about their identities? Mmm, intriguing. Next on July 13th is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I, um, 
have read some of the Hot and Hammered series by Tessa Bailey, namely Fix Her Up. I loved Fix Her Up when I read it and I need to read the, the rest of the series soon. But I'm really excited for this one because it's apparently inspired by Schitt's Creek. Piper is a famous wild child. When her antics land her in the slammer, her stepfather decides that she's to be cut off and shipped out to her sister to run the dive bar of their late father in a small town in Washington. There, she meets big bearded sea captain Brandon, who thinks she won't last a week outside of Beverly Hills. She's determined to show her stepfather and Brandon that she's more than just a pretty face. Except it's a small town and everywhere she turns, she runs into Brandon. The fun-loving socialite and the gruff fisherman pull her opposite, but there's an undeniable attraction between them. Piper doesn't want any distraction, but as she connects to the small town, she begins to wonder if the glamorous life she led in LA is really what she wants. I, I'm intrigued, I want to read it. Then on July July 27th, there are two historical romances coming out that I want to talk about. The first one is Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas, and Lisa Kleypas is pretty well known in the historical romance genre. I haven't read her yet, but I am looking forward to reading some of her works in the future. And this is a number seven in the Ravenel's series. Lady Merritt Starling is a young widow running her late husband's shipping company, and society is dying to catch her in a scandal. She meets Care McRae, a rough and rugged Scottish whiskey dealer, and all of her sensibilities vanish like smoke. They couldn't be more different, but their attraction is powerful. From the moment Kara arrives in London, he has two goals. One is don't fall in love with Lady Merritt, and two is don't get killed. Neither is going well. I love historical romance. Honestly, I really hope that I read more of it over the summer. Ever since reading Tessa Dare's Wallflowers series, I've just like fallen in love with the genre. And then next is a debut historical romance, and that is Not the Earl You Marry It by Kate Pembroke. And this is the first in the Unconventional Ladies of Mayfair series. William Atherton, Earl of Norwood, is shocked to discover his betrothal announcement in the morning paper, along with the rest of London. Furious at what appears to be a marriage trap, he hunts down his alleged fiance before her plans shudder his political ambitions. But then William realizes an engagement may benefit them both. Miss Charlotte Hurst may be a wallflower, but she's not a shaking violet. She would never attempt such an underhanded scheme. Yet his suggestion to play along with the engagement does have its merits. We have like a fake engagement trope. Love that. All right, moving on to August. On August 3rd, we have If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. This is like a Cinderella retelling, I think. Cindy is trying to get her feet on the ground after graduating with a degree in shoe design. Cindy is working for her stepmother who happens to be an executive on America's most popular dating reality show, Before Midnight. When a spot opens on the show and needs filling ASAP, Cindy volunteers, thinking that it can help launch her fashion career. But being the only plus size woman on a reality dating show makes a splash, and soon Cindy becomes a bi positivity icon for women everywhere. What she doesn't expect is to find inspiration and maybe love on the show. Oh, I love that spin. It's like Cinderella meets The Bachelor. I'm into it. Also on August 3rd, we have The Mismatch by Sarah Jafari. Soraya Nazari just graduated from university and she thinks it's time to get some life experience that she's been missing out on, namely her first kiss. Magnus Evans seems like the perfect person to help her with this, whereas Soraya is a somewhat timid artistic daughter of Iranian immigrants. Magnus is the quintessential strapping British lad. Because they have so little in common, there's no way that feelings can get tangled up in the mix. Right? And even so, the more she discovers about her mother's past and the strain between her parents, the less appealing marriage becomes to Soraya. However, before long, Soraya begins to realize there's more to Magnus than meets the eye. But could she really see herself in a relationship with him? So many good tropes. Then these next two books are out on August 31st. The first one is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang and this is the third in the Kiss Quotient series, which I do hope to read before this third one comes out. To most people, Quan Depp is nothing but an underachieving playboy, even though he's none of those things. The problem is now that he is a CEO of an up-and-coming retail business and suddenly he's a catch and rich girls that never paid attention to him suddenly are starting to look his way, including Camilla, the girl who brushed him off many years ago. Anna's son dislikes Quan immensely, or so she tells herself. She will never admit to her secret crush on him, especially when he only has eyes for her newly engaged younger sister, Camilla. Over the years, Anna has worked to overcome her OCD but she will need to even further set aside her anxieties in order to seduce Quan and stop him from ruining her sister's engagement. And then this next one I'm also really looking forward to, and that is The Royals Next Door by Karina Hale. I love this cover, I just think it's so funny. Piper Evans is an elementary school teacher by day, and by night she is an avid romance reader and anonymous podcaster. She lives a quiet life and tries to make inroads in the tight-knit community 
on the island where she lives, where even five years in, she's still kind of considered an outsider. Suddenly, British royals rent the property next door to her, and she's deemed a security threat. Piper realizes one person's fairy tale is another person's nightmare as the media frenzy takes over the island, and each run-in with Harrison Cole is hotter and more confusing than ever. But when Piper finds herself in the middle of a royal scam, she'll need more than Harrison's strong arms to shield her. I love the whole royalty trope. I just think it's so fun, honestly. Okay, now moving on to September, which is the end of summer and the last month that I have to talk about in this video. The first book is Portraits of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore, and this is the third in A League for Extraordinary Woman series, which another series that I want to start reading. London banking heiress Hattie Greenfield just wants three things in life. A claim as an artist, a noble cause, and marriage to a man who puts the gentle in gentlemen. Why then does this Oxford scholar find herself at the altar with the darkly attractive financer Lucian Blackstone, whose murky past and ruthless business practices strike fear into the hearts of Britain's peerage? Trust Hattie to take an invigorating adventure just a little bit too far. Now she's stuck with a churlish Scot, who just might be the end of her ambitions. When the daughter of his business rival falls into his lap, Lucian sees an opportunity. As a self-made man, he has a vast wealth, but he holds little power, and Hattie might be the key to this. Driven by an old revenge, he has no use for his new Wife's apprehensions or romantic notions, as, even as bewitching as he finds her. Uh, but a sudden journey to Scotland paints everything in a different light. Mmm, I love a good little fun Regency romance. Next on September 14th is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, and as soon as I saw this one, I was like, oh my god, I love this. There's so many science puns in the description. Sign me up. As a third year PhD candidate, Olive Smith doesn't believe in long-lasting romantic relationships, but her best friend does, which is what gets them into the situation, convincing on that Olive is actually dating and well on her way to a romantic happily ever after, was always going to take more than just telling her. Scientists require proof. So like any self-respecting biologist, Olive does the first thing that she can think of and kisses the first man that she sees. That man is none other than <clears throat> Adam Carlston, a young hotshot professor and a well-known ass. Which is why Olive is positively floored when Stanford's reigning lab tyrant agrees to keep up the charade. But when a big science conference goes haywire, putting Olive's career on the Bunsen burner, <laughs> Adam surprises her again with his unyielding support and even more unyielding six-pack abs. Suddenly, their little experiment feels dangerously close to combustion. And Olive discovers that the only thing more complicated than a hypothesis on love is putting her love under a microscope. I love the pines. It's just so great. Then next on September 21st, we have The Legacy by L. Kennedy, my queen. This is novel 4.5 in the Off Campus series, which is a series, probably one of the first like new adult series that I read, college hockey romance. And this follows the four couples from that series and they each have a novella of where are they now? The famous ab cover is back. <laughs> um, I love this series. I, of course, want to see what's up with these characters, so I'm totally going to read this. And the last book that I have to talk about today is A Spot of Trouble by Terry Wilson. I'm a big dog person, so when I saw this cover, I was like, oh my god, I want it, I need it. The arrival of a new fire marshal in a small seaside town of Turtle Beach, North Carolina, turns the community upside down when his partner, a Dalmatian, trained as a fire safety demonstration dog, accidentally gets switched with a naughty look-alike Dalmatian belonging to the free-spirited daughter of the local police chief. Now it's like a dog parent drought. The two Dalmatian owners constantly butt head, but by the time that the 4th of July fireman's ball rolls around, they begin to realize that sometimes love is more than black and white. Oh my god. Just if it's a dog like involving romance, I'm there, basically. And there you have it. Those are all the romances that I have for you today. I love romance books. I'm so excited to check out these titles. Please give your support to all of these authors. They deserve it. And let me know what title you are most excited about checking out down below. And once again, thank you to the Kiss app for sponsoring this video. I'm so excited that we got to work together. Please check out that app. It is just like a lot of fun and you can find so many great romance stories on there. And with that, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.